Dengue in recent times has become a topic of global concern. It is one of the most significant mosquito-borne viral diseases. Dengue is a virus which gets into the human body by the bite of a mosquito of the genus Aedes, meaning odious or unpleasant in Greek. It has two particular species, Aegypti and Albopticus. Albopticus coming from a Latin word for painted white. Since mosquitoes are found in most of the regions of the world, dengue is one of the frequent infections in tropical and subtropical climates worldwide. This is true mostly in urban and semi-urban areas. With dramatically increased global incidence in recent decades, about half of the world's population is now at risk. Severe dengue is a leading cause of serious illness and death among children in some Asian and Latin American countries. But why has the incidence of this disease seen such a rise in recent times? This is mostly down to climate change, socio-economic and settlement settings, as well as travel and viral evolution. The first record of symptoms similar to dengue infection was reported in a Chinese encyclopedia in 992 AD. The disease was then called water poison. This was followed by resembling epidemics in different regions of the world in Central America, including West Indies. But whether this disease originated in Asia or in Africa is a topic of debate. It was only in the 20th century that scientists discovered that dengue is transmitted by a mosquito. Up to now, four serotypes of dengue have been reported. But how exactly does the dengue virus get inside the human body? Well, the most common mode of transmission of dengue is from the bite of a mosquito carrying dengue virus. Other modes of transmission include, but are not limited to, from an infected pregnant lady to the fetus at the time of pregnancy or at the time of birth, infected blood, laboratory or healthcare setting exposures, and rarely does it get transmitted from blood transfusion, organ transplant, or through a needle stick injury. It should be noted that dengue virus is not transmitted from person to person. So how can you identify whether you've been infected with dengue? The development of dengue fever ranges from mild to severe. The initial acute fever is characterized by nausea, vomiting, rashes, aches and pain in the eye, behind the eyes, in your muscles, in your joints, or even in your bones. If left untreated, this will lead to dengue hemorrhagic fever. That will lead to bleeding from the nose or gums, vomiting blood, blood in the stool, feeling tired, restless or irritable. When this worsens, it will lead to dengue shock syndrome that can lead to shock or coma. So what if a mosquito with dengue randomly bites you and you get manifestations similar to the illness? Panicking does not really help. Besides, dengue is not a fatal disease in its initial stage. You could get yourself tested as dengue suspects can be checked for infection by molecular tests, dengue virus antigen detection, serologic tests and even tissue tests. The various specimen types include serum, plasma, whole blood, cerebrospinal fluid, and fixed tissue. But as severe dengue is fatal, you shouldn't get delayed for testing for dengue. As the fatality rate of dengue is below 1% along with supportive medications, there is not a lot to worry. Unlike other mosquito-borne viral diseases like malaria, for example, there are no specific medications to treat dengue. Supportive therapy includes fever control and pain-relieving medicine like paracetamol. Preventive measures include taking as much rest as possible, not taking aspirin or ibuprofen, drinking plenty of fluid, immediate medical attention or hospitalization if necessary, prevention of mosquito bites, use of bed nets and mosquito repellents, wearing of long sleeve shirts and long pants, taking steps to control mosquito breeding and laying eggs. As for example, ditching ponds and water bodies around your house and locality. Once a week, you can also empty and scrub, turn over, cover or throw out items that hold water Water, such as tires, buckets, planters, toys, pools, bird baths, flower pots or trash containers. Besides these things, there are also remedies that you can try yourself at home. These remedies have been reported to be supporting to mitigate the dengue infection. Any food that helps to decrease fever, pain and nausea and cold attack is great if you're looking to avoid dengue. This might include herbal and ginger tea with different green leaves, orange juice, mint leaves, apple cider, vinegar, etc. The people who are at the highest risk from dengue are those living in areas with mosquito breeding regions. Children who can't avoid mosquito bites and people with suppressed immune system are also vulnerable. So if you fall in any of the aforementioned categories, you need to be a tad more attentive about dengue.